Hello, we're the SpaceX fans and welcome to the SpaceX Show, the place where you can stay up to date with everything SpaceX. This episode consists of a few SpaceX updates, but as usual at the moment, we mostly have Starship. We have Boca Chica, successful SN4 testing, SN5, then some potential SN6 rings. So let's head straight in and get up to date. To begin with, a few tweets from SpaceX. Firstly, they have performed a successful static fire of the booster B-1061 which will launch the first operational Crew Dragon mission. The company also tweeted this picture of the second stage for the same mission which also completed a successful static fire. Another thing SpaceX tweeted was this picture of a second stage Merlin vacuum optimized engine. SpaceX said this is their 100th second stage engine developed, which is really cool. As I said, only a few SpaceX updates, but we have some new tweets and information from Elon Musk. Starting with this tweet where Musk responded to a question about the belly flop, saying he's not confident and that it could very much result in a rud or rapid unscheduled disassembly. Also, in response to the Merlin vacuum engine tweet we saw earlier, everyday astronauts said that the Merlin was hilariously simple as far as rocket engines go. I mean, this is literal rocket science, so it's definitely not simple, but Musk responded saying that Merlin is very simple compared to Raptor. In response to that thread, somebody tweeted about an engine video by Everyday Astronaut. Musk responded with some information about the Raptor production by saying, as usual for most things, building production system for Raptor is more than a thousand percent harder than designing it. Finally, for Elon Musk updates, as some of you will be aware, Elon Musk recently participated in an AMA for Hat Club. Quite a few Hat Club students were given the opportunity to ask Musk a question during which he was talking from the Boca Chica construction yard. Musk talked a little bit about SpaceX and some of the problems they're still having with welding. Uh, but we're still getting a little bit of pucker and, um, and, the, and the, the welds are going a bit slow. Um, and um, then I was out there just talking with the, the welding team and the, the, the I think the, 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 it was like, the issue was like really we're we're rotating the barrel only at a, a quarter meter per minute uh, but the barrel rotation tool is capable of 1.5 meters per minute and the, the welding the welding torch was not set at maximum power um, and so the, the result was that we were heating the, the, the steel too much and it was softening um, and and, 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 and then just slightly collapsing under its own weight. Also, apparently the welding team was reluctant to change the settings, but Elon told them to try, otherwise they won't know. Because they were worried about like changing the parameters and, and then maybe scra having scrap barrels. And these are barrels that are you know, nine meters in diameter, or 30, 30 feet in diameter basically. Um, and the, you're two of them. And so they're like, well, we don't want to scrap the barrel. We're worried about changing the settings, but it's like, okay, but let's just have some fun here and try some experiments because during the AMA he said he would be going out to help the welders pretty much straight after the call. In fact right after this call I'm headed out there to see the results and I think we, we, we kind of messed up half the world but I think the other half is, is good. Somebody tweeted and asked how that went after the AMA and Musk responded saying improved process I was referring to was cylinder to cylinder circumferential welds to improve cycle and reduce pucker. Those are still working their way through production. With Musk and SpaceX updates addressed, we'll head over to Boca Chica where we have an onion tent being worked on. At first, I thought that they were deconstructing it, but as you can see here, that's not the case. After reviewing previous footage and putting some pieces together, it appears that it's being extended at the back. With SM4 on the test stand, engineers continued to work on it in preparation for testing. I don't have any footage to show, but April 26th, SM4 completed a successful first ambient pressure test. However, really early this morning, April 27th, SpaceX completed a successful first cryo pressure test of a full Starship tank section. I can't express how excited I am, but I still have a very good feeling about SN4. We have some new tweets from Elon Musk about the next steps, but before that, here's some cool footage Musk posted. He tweeted it with the caption, it's snowing in Texas. In response to that tweet, he was asked about what the next steps are in terms of testing for SM4. Musk said that there will be a static fire with Raptor hopefully later this week. He also tweeted about what's going to happen after the static fire, saying that SM4 should do a 150 meter hop. Also, in another tweet, he said that SM4 will only get one Raptor, so maybe the engine we saw in the last episode is the one. This is an incredible achievement and brings us that one step closer to Mars. Now onto SM5 as quite a bit has been going on with the vehicle. 
Here you can see the section that was moved into the high bay last episode. Based on Raphael's last diagram, these appear to be for the liquid oxygen tank. Outside the building, there was also recently a stacked section with rings 129 and 130 plus another ring below. However, it wasn't too long before these were moved into the high bay as well. In a surprise event that I didn't see coming at all, the new nose cone that we saw in the last episode has also been stacked. It's a lot less shiny, so it looks slightly weird with the rings, but nonetheless, it looks to be a very good build. However, Elon Musk tweeted about it and said these won't strictly be coupled to serial number, might be on SM4 or might just be used as a manufacturing pathfinder. So it could even be removed as SM5 stacking progresses, we'll just have to wait and see. Other stacked SM5 sections have also been spotted out in the yard, here you can see two of them. The one behind is the methane tank common bulkhead because of the ring number 117 as you can see here. That SM5 common bulkhead section was also flipped recently as you can see here, so it probably won't be long before it moves into the high bay too. Finally, on SM5 we have the latest build diagram from Raphael Adami once again, so thanks to him for keeping on top of all of the changes. Just before we finish up this episode, let's see some more SM5 or SM6 rings that have been captured moving around. Here is the ring number 134 which was recently moved into the onion tent right next to the high base so maybe this is for SN5 but could potentially be for SN6 too. Without any categorical SN6 updates I'll show you another ring that was moved in the yard. You can see here ring number 149 was transported near a tent but not into a tent. Based on what we've seen for SN5 and assuming that these rings are used in sequential order it's probably safe to guess that this is for SN6 but I am just speculating. Also, it appears as though it could be moving to the rear of the onion tents as there is a pathway to the back between those tents. The only reason we get to see such amazing footage is because Mary goes out and sometimes spends whole nights waiting for stuff to film, such a dedicated and amazing person. So a massive thanks once again to both her and the NASA Spaceflight team for the incredible insights. That's it for this episode of the SpaceX Show, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did make sure to hit the like button and leave a comment down below. If you want to stay updated with SpaceX info, make sure to subscribe and press the bell icon to get notified when I upload. Thanks for watching and have a great day.